The most underrated camera of 2024 actually came out in 2020, and people have been sleeping on it ever since. No, it's not a Canon or a Sony, it's not a RED, it's not a Panasonic or even a Fuji. The most underrated camera on the market right now is the Blackmagic Versa Mini Pro 12K. But not only is it underrated, it's also been very unpopular in the camera world with the concept of a 12K resolution sensor being absolutely cringe. However, I'm here to tell you why this camera is so underrated, the features that make it much less cringy than its name suggests, and what exactly makes this camera a certified MVP of cinema cameras, even in 2024. But first, we have to look at the how and why of this camera getting such a bad rap upon its release. First, let's talk about the name. If this camera had simply been called the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G3, chances are it would have gotten way more appreciation. Clearly, Blackmagic thought that putting 12K in the name and touting this amazing resolution would be a huge selling point. But the reality is, the name and the resolution had the opposite effect for consumers. With the first reaction being, nobody needs 12K resolution. And to be perfectly honest, they're 100% right. You don't need that resolution. But the beauty of this camera is you don't have to shoot in 12K. In fact, you don't have to shoot in 8K. You can shoot in 4K and downsampling the image from the 12K sensor makes that 4K image awesome. Then there was the fact that it was using the same old tired Ursa Mini body, featuring zero changes from the Ursa Mini G1 and G2. That awkward football shape that always seems just slightly too large and too awkward no matter what configuration you put it in. Blackmagic loved to repurpose their old bodies for their newer cameras to save money. While in theory this is smart, in reality people want new things to look and feel new. If you're introducing the next generation camera sensor, you want that sensor to be in the next generation camera body that features refinements and improvements the same as the new sensor. And let's be realistic, there are many improvements Blackmagic could make to the Ursa's shape. With this one-two double whammy of silly resolution sizes and old out-of-date body designs, very few people were excited by the Ursa 12K, including me. It just seemed like an all-round dumb idea. Add to that the early reviews talking about the lack of an OLPF filter causing moiré and artifacting issues, and buggy software with phantom recording, it just seemed like the whole endeavour was a disaster from day one. And I dismissed this camera despite being a Blackmagic fanboy for over two years. Until I rented it out and realised just how badly I'd misjudged it. First, let's talk about the most important thing, the image. A lot of people have called this 12K the poor man's Ari. Now, if you're delivering on that promise image-wise, that's a hell of a compliment. And when I started to look at the image, I was completely blown away. The Blackmagic color science is taken to a new level with this camera. Words like cinematic and filmic are thrown around all the time, and by me especially, but this camera has a look that is gorgeous. It has a depth and pop to it that just feels next level. And let's talk about that resolution. I actually hate overly sharp images. I hate unnecessary resolution. But looking at this image in 12K, it doesn't have that ugly, sharp digital feel a 12K resolution might suggest. In fact, it's somehow very soft and pleasing. Moreover, one of the criticisms of the camera is that you can't crop in on your image to 100 or 200% and get tack sharp images. But should you be trying to? I mean, I appreciate that softness and think it lends itself to the natural, organic feeling this camera delivers. Also, the best thing about the 12K sensor is that when you choose to film in 8K or 4K, there is no crop on the image. You get the full width of the sensor, a frame which is considerably larger than the Blackmagic 6K cameras. So personally, I'd really, if ever, film in 12K. I'd choose to film in 4K or 8K and get all the goodness of that downsampled 12K sensor. And the downscaling capabilities of the 12K make it one of the most flexible high resolution cameras on the market, as you can just adjust your filming resolution to match each project and scale it up or down, along with B-Raw's awesome compression options, and save a ton of hard drive space while still maintaining exceptional image quality. You can actually film smaller file sizes on the 12K and B-Raw at 4K 
than you can on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K cameras. Think about that. But the sensor's benefits don't end there because you also get the best slow motion of any prosumer camera, better than any Sony or RED camera. The 120 frames per second in 8K or 4K variations is beautiful, and shooting 60 frames per second in 12K is a pretty amazing technological feat. Looking at the downsampled slow motion footage, it is really second to none. This camera is an absolute slow motion beast. And when you're downsampling the image, it also means you almost completely eliminate rolling shutter, something that has been very problematic in the Blackmagic Pocket line of cameras. It's also the first Blackmagic camera to really handle extreme colors well. We shot this stress test with crazy mixed lighting just to see if we could break the B-Raw codec, but it completely held up. Again, there's just a depth and pop to the image that is really special and something the Ursa G1 and G2 still struggle with. It also comes with an interchangeable PL mount, which allows you to use proper cinema PL lenses instead of EF lenses whenever you want. And look, while it would have been great to get a redesigned body, ultimately the Ursa body offers you everything you could possibly need for film productions, both big and small. It has a nice large LCD touchscreen, it has multiple 12G SDI connectors built in, internal NDs, two built-in full-size XLRs with phantom power, timecode in, and you can record to dual CFast 2.0 cards or output to SSD hard drives. There's even a DTAP out port on the back, which is super helpful for powering accessories like an additional monitor. Basically, the camera is completely usable without buying anything extra and has everything you need on the body itself. Just strap a V-mount battery to its back and it's ready to go. And let's be clear, the negative perception that surrounds this camera is actually a great thing for those willing to judge it based on its actual merits. The Ursa 12K was originally priced at $10,000, a fair price for a high-end cinema camera with revolutionary specs. Unfortunately, that put it in direct competition with heavy hitters like Red's line of cinema cameras, and presumably through a lack of sales, Blackmagic decided to slash the price to $6,500. Now this is still a $10,000 cinema camera in terms of its image quality, but it's now in the price range of cameras that are much cheaper. And if you pick it up used, you can get it at absolute bargain prices. The revised OLPF version is out now, which reduces the Moiré and aliasing problems of the first version. However, it might be worth getting a 12K version one and buying an OLPF filter separately as you could stand to save a couple of thousand dollars in the process. The price to image quality ratio on this camera is an insanely good deal. The more you look at this camera and what it can do, it's hard to believe that it never took off. If only it wasn't for that damn name. So what are the downsides of this camera? We've already talked about its body design, which is both good and bad, but there are a few extra things to note. One, this camera is not good in low light. The 12K sensor performs well with light and it performs poorly without it and that means that the Pocket 6K cameras are much more suitable for run and gun work with minimal lighting. 2. It chews up batteries. The sensor is hungry for light and hungry for power and running that sensor will eat through V-mount batteries quickly, so you need to be prepared with large watt hour V-mounts on standby. And finally, the image from the Blackmagic Pocket 6K cameras is just so good and so affordable, it almost cannibalizes the audience who might want the Ursa camera. It's not as good as the 12K's image, but it's not that far off. And so, while I maintain that the 12K has the special magic source that really puts it on another level, most people will be more than happy with how far the 6Ks punch above their weight, and therefore, why many may choose not to upgrade. So in conclusion, if you want a poor man's Ari, like I want a poor man's Ari, then it's time to revisit the 12K. Do you need 12K resolution? Probably not. Do you need the Ursa 12K camera? It's definitely worth thinking about. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like and subscribing. And if you want to see an award-winning short horror filmed entirely on a Blackmagic Ursa G1 and Pocket 4K, click on the video beside me.